Good morning students, uh, this is lecture 27 under module 9. Uh, in today's lecture, we will discuss about dialysis, its basic principles, advantages, uh, various membranes that is being used for uh, dialysis purposes. Uh, then we will try to understand the mass transport in dialysis and we will discuss about diffusion analysis that is Donan dialysis and uh, two applications of uh, dialysis. So, uh, dialysis pertains to the transport of a solute across a membrane by diffusion resulting from a concentration difference. There is no external pressure uh, is applied here uh, like in uh, reverse osmosis, ultrafiltration or microfiltration. So, here concentration difference is the sole driving force and the difference should be large and the membrane should be thin okay, to reduce the diffusion path because if the membrane will be thick, it will provide an external uh, resistance to the uh, diffusion path. So, the diffusion of the solutes will uh, slow down or will be less, but the process is extremely slow compared to pressure driven membrane because pressure driven membrane processes are uh, actually under uh, certain external force that is pressure. Okay, so, they are a little fast, here it is uh, happening spontaneously by the virtue of the concentration uh, difference that is the sole driving force and of course, other things also plays an important role like the diffusivity and solubility across the membrane uh, material which is being used, the pore size of the membrane, the type of membrane and all these things also plays a important role. So, uh, unlike ultrafiltration and reverse osmosis where solvent passes through the membrane, it is the solute that passes through the membrane. So, this is very important. So, uh, in ultrafiltration reverse osmosis, we have seen that we are pushing the uh, solvent through the membrane. So, the permeate is containing always the aqueous medium or water or solvent whatever you can call it and the solutes are getting rejected on the surface of the membrane, but in dialysis it is the reverse that means the solute are passing whereas the solvent is being held at the feed side or the retentor side. You can see this here uh, three types of solutes are being uh, I have shown you. So, um, the small solutes which is this uh, yellow color ok, so they are permeating through, so they are passing through the membrane. Right, whereas, uh, the large solutes uh, this uh, blue one and the red one by virtue of their size they are getting retained on the surface of the dialysis membrane. So, separation between the solutes occur as a result of difference in diffusion rates across the membrane that is arising due to the difference in the molecular size as well as solubility. So, uh, mechanism is the diffusive solute transport. So, you can see here this is the schematic diagram of the dialysis process where the feed is flowing in one direction and you get a purified feed here and in the reverse direction we are flowing uh, the water which is known as dialysate. Okay, it may be water, it may be any buffer solution and any other solvent also. So, this is a counter current arrangement actually feed and uh, dialysate are uh, flowing across each other in the reverse direction. So, usually uh, the resistance of the membrane increases with increase in the molecular weight and the size of the return species is about 50 to 200 angstrom. So, dialysis requires that membrane separating two liquids uh, permit diffusional exchange between at least some of the solutes uh, while effectively preventing any convection mixing between the concentrated and dilute solutions. Now, please note that the membrane is semi permeable membrane and membranes are in such a way that it will allow the passage of certain solutes whose uh, sizes are very, very low. Um, compared to the uh, pore size of the membranes and it will not allow the convection mixing of the solutes in both sides in the permeate sites or down or um, uh, retentor sites. So, here in dialysis we called it upstream side and downstream side. So, upstream side is your feed side and the downstream side is the permeate side. So, the feed solution or dialysate which contains the solute to be separated flows on one side of the membrane and the solvent or diffusate uh, stream on the other side. Okay. So, some solvent may also diffuse across the membrane in opposite direction thereby reducing the performance by diluting the dialysate. The transmembrane concentration difference should be maintained large to achieve high fluxes. Separation in dialysis is governed by small pores and diffusion and therefore, small molecules diffuse faster than the uh, large ones. So, this is the principle actually. The membrane pores must be very small to prevent convective transport of the solution resulting from uh, a small pressure difference across the membrane to reduce the diffusive resistance the membrane are generally highly swollen. 
So the swelling results in high diffusion coefficients as compared to unswollen membranes. Uh, the diffusion coefficient of a low molecular weight solute within a polymer can vary from about 10 to the power of minus 19 per, per meter square second um, in a glassy polymer up to 10 power of minus 9 meter square per second for a highly swollen polymer. You can see this is another schematic representation of the dialysis uh, process. You can see the globular proteins, okay, the big sizes, um, so they are getting retained on the surface of the membrane, whereas the small molecules, okay, about 5 angstrom, 78 Dalton, 23 Dalton. Okay, now the salt ion as well as small molecules, so they are permeating through the downstream side or to the uh, they are getting permeated or transported to the permeate side. So, dialysis was the first membrane process to be used on an industrial scale to separate and recover sodium hydroxide from hemicellular solution during the production of rayons with the development of Serini dialyzer in Italy. So, Serini dialyzer was is one of the most uh, adapted, well adapted dialyzers in uh, industries, uh, mostly textile industries. So, uh, so, what is happening actually during the production of rayons, the hemicellulases are getting mixed with sodium hydroxide to a very high concentration. So, in uh, sodium hydroxide is very costly and in industrial parlance it is better uh, if you can recover sodium hydroxide um, from the hemicellulose solution. Using this Serini dialyzer, um, about 90 percent of the sodium hydroxide in the original feed solution was recovered. So, it was found to be the process was found to be extremely economical. So, later on the Serini dialyzer was modified and adapted in various industrial purposes. Uh, so, uh, um, further improved membranes and improved dialyzer designs mostly of the plate and frame type were produced. Dialysis was later used in laboratory during 1950s and 60s mainly to purify biological solutions or to fractionate macromolecules. Uh, later on salts and low molecular weight compounds are separated from serum proteins and vaccines um, in the year 1960s and uh, beyond that. Uh, if you look at the advantages of dialysis, so low energy consumption is one of the most important advantages because you do not know an external uh, force, so you do not need uh, uh, energy. So, it runs under normal pressure and has no state change during the process, so no power is needed for running. So, uh, it has a low installation and operating cost, it is stable, reliable and easy to operate, it is environmental friendly operation. Uh, it is simple, economical and energy efficient process, higher efficiency in purifying wastewater, improvement on the productivity and quality, uh, quality of the product. So, these are some of the advantages of dialysis. So, the applications of dialysis are numerous, uh, numerous applications are there. So, removal of acids and alkali from products, removal of alcohol from beer to make uh, alcohol free beer, removal of salts and low molecular weight compounds from solutions of macromolecules, then concentration of macromolecules, controlling chemical species inside a reactor, purification of biotechnological products, hemodialysis, these are actually uh, some of the applications of uh, dialysis. We will see one or two such applications today in our subsequent discussion. So, let us now discuss about the dialysis membranes. So, dialysis membranes are very uh, different from other uh, usual membranes which are employed in your um, ultra filtration, micro filtration or reverse osmosis. So, dialysis is mainly used to separate low molecular weight components from those of high molecular weight components. So, dialysis is mainly employed with aqueous solutions, but the process is not limited short only to aqueous solutions. Sufficient permeation rate can be achieved by the help of highly swollen membrane in the expanse of the membrane selectivity. This is just what we have discussed. So, if the membrane becomes swell, the selectivity is comes down, but the permeation rate or the diffusion rate of the solutes uh, become high. So, finding an optimum between the diffusion rate and swelling is therefore very important. So, moreover, membranes as thin as possible are desired. Hydrophilic polymeric materials such as cellophane and cuprophane, uh, which are both regenerated cellulose, have been used for most aqueous applications. So, you will see uh, different literature, different books, and you will notice that most of the dialysis membranes are from RC, that is regenerated cellulose. So, regenerated cellulose is a variety of cellulose. We have discussed this in our uh, second or third class when we discussed about membrane materials in detail, its properties of the cellulosic membranes and properties of the regenerated cellulose. So, cuprophone is a registered name of the membrane made from cupra ammonium rayon made from cellulose dissolved in cupra ammonium solution. It is produced by ANCA corporation in West Germany, later it become the membrane in polypore corporation Germany. So, this is the, the structure of the regenerated uh, cellulose. 
So, then chemical modifications were made for regenerated cellulose membranes mostly because of improving their biocompatibility by replacing their hydroxyl groups with acetate groups. Then they are called as cellulose acetate, okay. CA, cellulose diacetate, CDA or cellulose triacetate, CTA. So, this is cellulose diacetate structure and this is cellulose triacetate structure, okay. So, the first dialyzer with a cellulose hollow fiber membrane was developed by chemical engineers Stewart and Lips in 1967 in Massachusetts Institute of Technology that is MIT in Boston in United States. The commercial product was available in 1972 from Cody's Dow uh, company uh, which is located in Miami in again in United States. Uh, the basic structure of the hollow fiber dialyzer is the same as the one of the multi-tube heat exchanger that is uh, compact and has large surface area. The idea is to have as in a small area you can uh, achieve uh, a large surface area. The first dialyzer with a synthetic polymeric hollow fiber membrane uh, sterilized by gamma ray was introduced by Tore Corporation in uh, Japan in which polymethyl methyl cryolate which is called as PMMA was used as the main material. So, this is PMMA structure. Uh, to improve solute and hydraulic permeabilities as well as biocompatibilities, many synthetic polymeric membranes have been introduced to the market since early 80s and currently these membranes are the mainstream. So, among them are PSA polysulfon and the like including polyethersulfon, uh, PES, uh, polyarylethersulfon, PAES or PAES have the highest market share over the world. So, PES is very versatile and it is most widely used. So, it is a derivative of polysulfon member, polyethersulfon and it has the highest market uh, cell and over the entire world. So, there are few other membrane materials also. So, these are called uh, P, uh, just listed here. This is PVA polyvinyl alcohol, and then uh, PVP polyvinyl pyroridon, then copolymers of ethylene and vinyl acetate or ethylene and vinyl alcohol of polycarbonate and polyether, polyacrylonitrile. So, PAA polymethyl acrylate again PMMA. So, these are some of the uh, structures of uh, this is EVL, this is PVP, and this is again PMMA. Okay. Now, let us understand the mass transported dialysis. Please uh, have a close look at this particular uh, figure. So, this figure is telling you about the concentration profile in dialysis. So, this is your membrane okay. and uh, this is boundary layer. So, you can call this is boundary layer 1, this is boundary layer 2. right? So, we can describe the mass transport if, uh, when there is no boundary layer also. Okay. Then your membrane uh, will become something like this. right? So, the concentration profile will look like this, it will go okay, like this, look this, okay, C1 and C2. So, and this is membrane. So, this is without boundary layer. Okay. So, uh, here it is the bulk concentration C1, okay, then it is the bulk concentration C2 on the downstream side and then uh, the interface concentrations are also here. So, that which I have not uh, um, shown here and uh, the rate of mass transfer on the solute flux j yes, what is our interest our interest is to calculate solute flux right because here the solute is getting transported not the solvent is getting transported so we are will be calculating the solute flux so the js or the solute flux is directly proportional to the difference in concentration at the membrane surface so you can write js equals to ks d effective okay so this is actually uh, d e f f effective diffusivity then delta C by L m. So, uh, K s is the solute partition coefficient, D effective is that effective diffusivity of solute within the membrane and L m is the membrane thickness. Now, K s, D effective and L m these are all constant and then can be grouped together and that can be known as the mass transfer coefficient K m for a given membrane solute system. Uh, please remember that K m is fixed for a membrane and a solute system, a particular system and the equation can be written as so J s equals to K m delta C or delta C by R m. So, you know that uh, K m okay, is reciprocal of 1 over R m. So, R m is uh, the membrane resistance term. Now, the value of K m and hence R m is constant for a particular solute membrane system and is independent of operating parameters such as the hydrodynamics, hydrodynamics of the module. So, the membrane resistance alum seldom governs their overall mass transport. The liquid boundary layers on either side of the membrane also contribute resistance to 
transport. So, the time at which a solute flux occurs an osmotic solvent flow also takes place in opposite direction from low concentration region to high concentration region. The osmotic flow is proportional to the osmotic pressure difference because of the solute diffusion the concentration difference decreases, the osmotic pressure difference decreases and the solvent flow also decreases. In contrary solvent flow also leads to a decrease in the solute concentration on the high concentration region that decrease the solute concentration difference and also the solute flow. So, you can write the overall resistance as uh, R O equals to R m plus R 1 plus R 2, where R O is the overall resistance, R 1 is the resistance on the upstream side and R 2 is the resistance on the downstream side. So, we therefore can write that 1 over k naught equals to 1 over k m plus 1 over k 1 plus 1 over k 2. You know that uh, resistances are can be added in series. Similarly, the mass transfer coefficient also expressed in series. So, where k naught is the overall mass transfer coefficient and k 1 and k 2 are the mass transfer coefficients on the upstream side and downstream side respectively. So, the solute transport can therefore be represented by the following equation. So, J s equals to k naught C 1 minus C 2, where C 1 and C 2 are upstream feed and downstream dialysis concentrations respectively. So, uh, please have a look at this, this is mass transport in hollow fiber dialysers. Um, so, you can see this there are two different types of uh, dialysers I have shown here, one is for the co-current flow and another is the counter current flow. In the co-current flow the feed and the dialysate are flowing uh, in the same direction. So, it is coming like this and it is flowing in the same direction and uh, in the counter current flow it is in the opposite direction. So, C 1 and C 2 are the inlet and outlet concentration on the feed side and C 3 and C 4 are the inlet and outlet concentration of the dialysate side. Let us discuss about diffusion dialysis. So, let us understand what is diffusion dialysis. So, diffusion dialysis is an ion exchange membrane separation process. Now, here the membrane uh, is an ion exchange membrane uh, driven by concentration gradient and is also known as the concentration or natural dialysis. Mostly it is also known as donor dialysis due to the donor equilibrium concept. So, the first diffusion dialyzer was invented in the early 1950s. More than 30 years later, uh, diffusion dialysis technique was first developed into an industrial membrane process in Japan. As a spontaneous process, the process of DD or diffusion dialysis gives rise to an increase in entropy and decrease in Gibbs free energy. Hence, it is thermodynamically a favorable separation. You know what is donor dialysis? So, when uh, charged solutes are separated using a uh, mem membrane, uh, a, a ion exchange membrane, either a cation exchange or an ion exchange membrane, then uh, there is differences in the solute concentration on both sides of the uh, membrane. So, that they do not form an equilibrium that means, whatever solute is here in the upstream side, uh, the same solute is not is in equilibrium in the opposite side. That means, there is difference in concentrations okay, due to the diffusivity and the membrane properties and there are so many things. So, these are actually this is known as donor equilibrium. You can see this is a classic example of acid recovery using uh, donor dialysis. Uh, process uh, diffusion dialysis or donor in surface finishing or textile processes. So, in most of the uh, surface finishing and metal uh, manufacturing companies as well as textile industries you will have spent uh, acid bath. So, the spent acid bath contains so many different types of metals also. Now, acid is a valuable product it has to be recycled otherwise then the cost of the process will uh, increase unnecessarily. So, now you need to treat it. So, treat means what you need to recover the acid. So, the uh, diffusion dialysis plays a big role in this acid recovery. So, you can see how it is happening. Uh, the spent acid is uh, being fed to the membrane where it is a AAM. AAM means a anion exchange membrane. That means, this membrane is exchanging anions and it has fixed cationic charges. So, that is why cation sign is being imparted under the surface that cations are fixed to the membrane it into exchange anions. So, you can see here then uh, these blues are actually acid ions, red ones are hydrogen ions and this gray ones are metal ions. So, metal ion size is very big that is why it is getting rejected and it is retained on the surface of the membrane in the upstream side. Whereas, the hydrogen ions and acid ions they are being low in size are permeating through the membrane. So, that is why uh, acid is getting the uh, hydrogen ion and acid ions are getting uh, into the uh, into the downstream side. So, that is what the acid is getting to the downstream side and we can uh, get the acid here and as a dialysis we can flow water here. So, this is a dialysate. Okay. 
in an another example, this is illustration of a diffusion dialysis principle uh, for HCl separation from its feed solution. Now, during uh, the diffusion dialysis process, ion transport is driven mainly by the concentration gradient, right. So, and with the observation of the donan criteria of co ion rejection and preser uh, per preservation of electrical neutrality. So, uh, the principle of DD can be explained on the basis of the separation of uh, uh, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide from their feed solution. As shown in this figure, please see this as um, HCl and its metal salts in the feed solution tend to transport to the water site due to the concentration difference across the membrane. So, this is a anion exchange membrane. So, it has fixed cationic groups. Okay. So, the feed side we have chloride ions, we have hydrogen ions and we have metal ions. So, the metal ions are large in size. So, it is getting rejected here whereas, chloride ions as well as hydrogen ions are getting separated to the water side. So, this is the dialysate side. Okay. So, the presence of anion exchange membrane uh, permit the uh, passage of a chlorine ions which is negatively charged or sulphate or nitrate or phosphate ions uh, all of them which are negatively charged while the metals in the waste solution are much likely to pass because their size is big and there will be due to opposite uh, charges it will be repelled also. So, the hydrogen plus ions although positively charged okay, have higher competition in diffusion than metal ions because of their smaller size, lower valency state and higher mobility. So, you can always ask that why the hydrogen being positively charged is not getting repelled. It will, it is not getting repelled that is the reason is that the size is very small. So, its rate of diffusion is so fast than the metal ions. So, in comparison the hydrogen ions are getting diffused. Uh, through the pores uh, and they can diffuse along with the chloride ions uh, or sulphate nitrate or phosphate ions to meet the requirement of the electrical neutral. So, to requirement of the electrical neutrite when uh, neutrality when one uh, charged membrane is separating positively and negatively charged ions. So, the electrical neutrality has to be maintained. So, due to this also uh, the uh, cations and anions transport in opposite direction uh, many times to maintain this uh, neutrality. So, uh, this is another example in which sodium hydroxide separation is happening from its feed solution. The feed side contains sodium hydroxyl ions and then uh, it has um, tungsten ions. Okay. These are uh, tungsten ions is big ions. So, sodium hydroxide or sodium tungstide tend to transport to the water side due to the concentration difference across the membrane. So, here there is no ions. So, obviously, everything will try to uh, pass. However, because of the presence of a cation exchange membrane with having fixed anions okay uh, the sodium plus in the feed are permitted passes while as uh, tungsten minus 2 ions are much less likely to pass through the membrane. So, it is getting repelled and due to its size also it is not passing through the membrane. So, similar to hydrogen plus uh, through an uh, anion exchange membrane the hydroxyl ions have higher competition in diffusion than tungsten ions and can diffuse along with sodium uh, plus ions to meet the requirement of the electrical neutrality. Again the same concept here. So, in spite uh, having the hydroxyl group is the same negatively charged it is passing through because of the smaller size and to maintain again the electrical neutrality. Electrical neutrality concept will come into picture when you will have a membrane that is either cation exchange membrane or anion exchange membrane. Let us discuss about the membranes. So, two types of membrane basically either we will have an anion exchange membrane or we will have a cation exchange membrane. So, due to the higher demands of acid recovery in industrial parlance actually, so more attention has been placed on anion exchange membranes compared to cation exchange membranes. So, its application is more that is why lot of work is done on anion exchange membrane. So, a series of plate uh, anion exchange membranes and hollow fiber anion exchange membranes have been prepared from poly 26 dimethyl one for phenylene oxide which is known as PPO with quaternary amine. Their properties um, that is ion exchange capacity, uh, water retention capacity etcetera can be adjusted by bromine substitution content and position functional processes as well as amine or sealant crosslinking degree. So, this is one classical example of a high performance anion exchange membrane with proton transport pathways. Okay. So, ions will transport okay, for diffusion dialysis fabricated through cationic functionalization of a bromomethylated poly or BPPO membrane by nucleophile diethylamine pyridine DMAP. So, you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 regions. The first region is the hydrophobic region followed by a active region the water channel through which actually uh, your uh, protons will uh, transport okay, or chlorine atoms will also transport. Then we have a interstitial region 
Okay, then we have a active region water channels, then we have again a hydrophobic regions. So, this region, this region, this region. So, these are actually the regions in through which your uh, protons and uh, chloride ions and all these ions transport will takes place. Since why there are different types of membranes that are fused together to enhance ion selectivity of a particular ion transport. So, cation exchange membranes for diffusion dialysis are relatively seldom reported compared with the AEMs as I already told that AEMs have lot of applications uh, in industry. So, the diffusion dialysis test in the system of sodium hydroxide plus NaCl, okay, this is one composite system or sodium hydroxide and Na2SO4 uh, sodium sulphate has been uh, investigated by a heterogeneous hollow fiber membranes with sulfonic acid groups. So, other CEMs such as hydrophilic fluorine membrane, hydrophobic fluorine membrane with uh, perfluoronate sulfonic acid groups and polyethylene heterogeneous membrane with sodium sulfonate groups are also used as matrices in recycling alkali from discharges. So, uh, this table uh, shows you the properties of sub commercially available ion exchange membrane for diffusion dialysis process. So, you can see these are the uh, membrane trade names actually here given here, the types are also given here um, uh, anion exchange, anion exchange all these things, this is the only one cation exchange membrane here, the thickness is given, the ion exchange capacity is given, uh, area resistance is given, then the material is given, okay, and the company name and the manufacturer name is also given. So, the advantages of diffusion dialysis is it is very low energy requirement uh, or energy efficient process, drastic reduction in fresh acid requirements, drastic reduction in neutralization and landfill costs, considerable reduction in pollutant fright, fully automatic operation, very low maintenance costs, long membrane service life, high economic efficiency and short amortization period. Amortization means when you have taken some loan and have some mortgage and all these things. Okay. Let us see two applications. The first application is uh, of diffusion dialysis. So, uh, a combination of hydrofluoric acid and nitric acid is often used for as pickling agents in special metal processing industries and large quantity of spent liquor are generated which contains both these acids. For instance, 2 into 10 power of 4 to 4 into 10 power of 4 kilogram of waste liquors composed of a nitric acid about 230 to 260 grams per liter and hydrofluoric acid about 3 grams per liter then uh, titanium 4 plus uh, about uh, 18 to 24 grams per liter and other mental impurities is produced when 1000 kilogram of titanium materials are processed. Okay, so, it is a huge amount of uh, spent liquor actually containing so many valuable components. So, in the stripping solution for the printed circuit boards the contents of dissociative uh, uh, nitric acid and uh, tin are more than 100 grams per liter, so almost 20 to 30 percent and the contents of copper and iron are 14 grams per liter and 4 grams per liter respectively. Since nitric acid and hydrofluoric acid are more expensive than other inorganic acids, so their uh, regenerations are necessary for industrial uh, parlance actually. So, this is how actually this is a schematic diagram of the regeneration of uh, the spent acids uh, where a mixed acid of nitric acid and hydrofluoric acid is getting recovered. So, you can see this uh, T1 is the recovered uh, acid tank here, okay, T2 is the fresh acid tank, then T3 is the itching tank where itching is being carried out, then T4 is the spent liquor tank. Okay. Uh, from here actually our process of this recovery starts. So, then it is pumped and it goes through a dialysis unit you can see here okay. and from here we are supplying the dialysis the stripping water or we can call it a dialysate. Okay pure water is being supplied here in the reverse direction. So, you see this is the direction of this is the direction of feed this is the direction of dialysate in counter current operation okay. and then uh, the recovered acid okay, here okay it's getting uh, recycled to the recovered acid tank okay and c1 is the neutralization tank here and c2 is the precipitation style so this is actually taking uh, t7 uh, is the one which is the waste collection tank or the dialysate waste collection tank so it is containing this uh, metals so the needs to be precipitated and then needs to be recovered so the c1 uh, is neutralization and c2 is precipitation tank right so this is and schematic of we, we can understand from this actually how um, the recovery of mixed acids are carried out in uh, industries. The uh, next um, application is 
uh, regarding alkali waste. So, alkali waste is mainly generated from paper, leather, printing and dyeing industry, tungsten ore smelting, otherwise man made fiber industries. So, the direct discharge of the waste would lead to corrosion of channels, pipelines of plants, change of water pH affecting the cell purification of rivers and other water bodies and metabolic disorders in human. Among the different membrane related methods, the energy cost of diffusion dialysis is the lowest for the recovery of alkali through the efficiency, though the efficiency is relatively lower. Uh, Astham Corporation successfully developed a uh, DD process to recover sodium hydroxide from the aluminum etching solution. Now, these earlier trials and experiences make significant contribution to the realization of alkali recovery through the diffusion dialysis process. Now, the following reaction can occur during the DD process for aluminum etching solution. So, um, sodium aluminate plus 2 water will give sodium hydroxide plus sodium hydroxide, aluminum hydroxide bohemite or plus sodium hydroxide. So, this is the process of recovery of sodium hydroxide. So, you can see here this is actually the tank which is containing the sodium hydroxide and alumina. So, it is being pumped to here. So, this is the feed flow okay. and from here this is the dialysate flow right. So, this is water uh, is uh, being passed through in the reverse direction of the uh, feed flow. So, then the sodium hydroxide transport occurs from here to here. So, the sodium hydroxide is getting collected in the dialysate site and again getting recycled back here right. And whatever the um, uh, uh, spent uh, whatever the purified uh, um, uh, 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 aqueous solution without sodium hydroxide is coming. So, that goes to crystallization uh, where you can collect uh, alumina or this uh, aluminum hydroxide and that the echant is recycled back to the sodium hydroxide recovery tank. You know hemodialysis is one of the most important application of the dialysis process. Now, hemodialysis is the medical procedure to remove waste and extra fluid to prevent them from building up in the blood. So, uh, it helps to regulate blood pressure is done during a ha uh, hemodialysis using a hemodialysis machine and the dialyzer, the dialyzer also known as, as artificial kidney. So, in 1950-60 this artificial kidney act came into picture. The population undergoing hemodialysis continues to increase with a higher proportion of elderly patients now given this therapy. So, you can see how this is being done actually. So, when you will decide the dialysis is required. So, when the acidosis that is pH becomes less than 7, uh, 7.1, when il, uh, electrolyte imbalance will uh, happen that means, let us for example, uh, 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 the potassium ion concentration becomes more than 6.5 milli equivalent per liters and then uh, otherwise when glomerular filtration rate GFR is less than 10 milliliter per minute. Uh, then uh, overload of fluids and uremic symptoms of course, increased level of nitrogenous waste products. So, uh, if all these things are happening in a human body then you need to go for dialysis. So, the principle is something like this. So, in hemodialysis the blood loaded with waste and extra fluid is diverted from the patient to a dialyzer. Uh, in which it is cleanest and then return to the patient. So, diffusion passive movement of solute from higher concentration blood to lower concentration dialysate. These wastes in the blood are removed. So, you can see the blood is uh, pumping through the dialysis unit. Okay. Uh, this is the feed side or upstream side. Okay. So, upstream and this is downstream and you are pumping a dialysate may be water or a buffer solution in the opposite direction uh, in a direction that is opposite to the feed direction. Okay. You can see the large molecular solutes okay. they will be retained here and very few will only pass through. Uh, so, net water movement and small molecule of the so small molecules so molecular solutes will pass through. So, excess water is removed from the blood in which water moves from the region of higher solute concentration that means, the blood to the region of lower solute concentration the dialysate bath. Ultrafiltration is used in the next step. So, ultrafiltration is used in the next step. So, solute and fluid removal across the semi permeable membrane down a pressure gradient is being carried out after it passes through the dialysis dialysis dialyzer or dialysis membrane. So, uh, 
Uh, different types of dialysis are actually available. So, the dialyzer is consists of a semi permeable membrane arranged to form separate adjacent paths for blood and dialysis fluids. Okay. So, flow occurs on opposite sides of the membrane in opposite directions to maximize diffusional gradients. So, you can see here um, this is a dialyzer actually, this is a dialyzer. Okay. So, uh, here the blood is getting pumped okay, and it is coming like this. Then the yeah, and the blood is flowing from this direction, then you are passing here uh, buffer solution or you can call dialysate or it may be water also okay, through uh, this side in the opposite direction to the, the blood flow, then the separation occurs and uh, whatever you are getting here is getting collected that is enriched with the low molecular of salts and the once the blood is purified, okay, its volume is reduced as well as the ex uh, toxic uh, components are removed, then the blood is fed back to the human body again. So, extracorporeal uh, circuit, so blood is withdrawn from the patient via arterial needle by a peristaltic pump okay, uh, circulated through the dialyzer and returned to the patient through the venous needle. So, by arterial uh, uh, pump or arterial needle, uh, the blood is being pumped out from the uh, patient to that to the dialyzer. And in the, uh, after the dialysis is over, the bl uh, blood is again the clean blood is being pumped back uh, to the human uh, to the human uh, to the human or the patient, okay, using a venous needle. So the circuit is anticoagulated either by unfractionated heparin, okay, which is infused downstream of the blood pump, or by low molecular weight heparin administered as a bolus. Okay. So, what is heparin? Heparin infusion is taking place, heparin is a anticoagulant. So, it will uh, not allow the blood to coagulate or settle down. Okay. So, uh, dialysis machine, so supplies dialysis uh, fluid at the prescribed flow rate, temperature and chemical composition. Also monitors the extracorporeal circuit and in uh, fail safe mode activates the venous uh, clamp and switches of the blood uh, pump as a bol bolus. You can see this is uh, how it looks actually in the diagram. So, water and dialysis fluid. So, dialysis machine mixes prepared concentrates of electrolytes with treated water to produce dialysate. Hemodialysis patients are exposed to get, like, uh, greater than 300 liters of water each week. The contamination of water with chemical impurities and microorganisms carries significant health risks. You can see how urea creatinine, potassium ions, calcium ions, uh, then carbonate ions or bicarbonate ions, and then sodium ions are getting transported or uh, plasma water is also getting transported from across the dialysis membrane. So, usually the dialysis fluid flow is about 700 or 800 milliliters per minute, whereas the blood is flowing uh, at a flow rate of 300 to 500 milliliter, uh, milliliter per millilitre, uh, minute. <coughs> So, another classic example of a dialysis is dialysis process is piezodialysis or known as PD. So, piezodialysis is also known as pressure dialysis. So, it is a process that removes salt from water in a re reverse way as that to uh, reverse osmosis. So, it is just opposite to reverse osmosis. See how uh, reverse osmosis, this is RO, okay, right. So, this is PD. So, in RO what is happening? I am pressurizing it, okay. So, that this delta pi should be much much greater than delta pi, delta p must be greater than delta pi, then only your solvent will flow from uh, higher concentration to lower concentration, this is RO. Okay. Solvent is flowing, not the ions, but here in PD what is happening? I am pressurizing it, okay. the same uh, system, but however, the uh, solvent is not flowing, How, uh, but the ions are uh, getting transported. What are the ions? The sodium ions and chloride ones. Okay. By virtue of their diffusivity and the virtue of their size, they are very small sizes and by virtue of uh, the diffusivity, they will transport across the membrane. So, the salt rejecting membrane in RO causes the effluent on the low pressure side to be desalinated. Here, it operates in the reverse way as the PD is separating the so, ions from the highly concentrated um, um, solvent side and, and getting it transported to the low concentrated uh, solvent slide. 
So, charged mosaic membranes containing domains of positively and uh, positively and negatively charged sites allow the permeation of both anions and cations from the high pressure region to low pressure region. So, by this way the solution in the high pressure region is desalinated. The close arrangement of the anion and cation exchange sites within the same membrane results in an abnormally high salt permeability relative to that of the neutral molecules. The action is similar to electrodialysis having an anion and cation exchange membrane, but without any electrodes. So, mosaic membranes can be something like this. Okay. So, a cationic group followed by anionic group, again cationic group followed by anionic group, cation, anion something like this may be separated by a neutral region. So, these are mosaic membranes. Okay. So, here there is no electrodes. right? So, separation is happening only due to the concentration difference uh, that is what is the driving force as well as the diffusivity of the solutes. So, the ability of counter ions to uh, move freely through the entire thickness of the membrane that is through the pathway of appropriate sign of fixed charges is emphasized. So, membrane uh, embedded ion exchange regimes. So, charged mosaic membranes are made from anion and cation exchange regimes of strong electrolyte type by embedding equivalent amounts of small sized resin particles and matrix polymers. Polymers such as silicon rubber, all polyvinyl chloride, PVC are usually used. Latex polyelectrolyte system are available in which a cross linked synthetic rubber film is converted to an anion exchange moiety that contains a closely inter uh, penetrating uh, network of cation exchange polymer. So, by modifying a polyethylene matrix with styrene divinyl benzene and 4 vinyl pyridine divinyl benzene copolymers and converting it to cation and anion exchange entities, PD membrane is developed. Okay, so, this is uh, uh, the section of a charged mosaic membranes. You see whatever the dark dark circles or dark areas, so that are represents the cation exchange membrane. Whatever is white, okay, so that uh, the light or light areas, so they are actually anion exchange regions. So, we can have stacked membranes also as I was just showing you and drawing. So, membranes are made by alternatively uh, stacking negatively and positively charged membranes of 200 micron thickness. Okay. So, we have a cation exchange membrane, then we have an anion exchange membrane, we have a cation exchange membrane, then we have an anion exchange membrane, something like this. Okay. So, an aqueous solution of PVA or a PVA copolymer that contain cation exchange groups can be cast to make a negatively charged membrane. Aqueous solution of PVA and a cationic polymer can be cast to make a positively charged membrane. There are other copolymers also. So, pentablock copolymers of the type B A, B C B are used to create charged mosaic membranes. Monomers used are isoprene, styrene isoprene or for uh, vinyl benzyl diethylamine or isoprene. Sulfonation of the styrene segments is done to form cation exchange uh, centers and then uh, quaternization of the amino groups is performed to form anion exchange centers. So, the piezodialysis the advantages are so minor component like salt passes through the membrane and not the major component which is water. Okay. So, small leak causes loss of only some of the product instead of contamination of the entire product stream. So, this is a very big advantage actually. However, the disadvantage is that it does not provide a positive barrier to the uncharged pollutants and pathogens just like in uh, reverse osmosis. So, with this we conclude today's lecture. So, uh, please refer Mulder or um, Kenneth's book for dialysis, uh, um, even you can uh, read Professor Bikadatta's books also. So, in case you have any queries, please feel free to write to me kmohanty at itg.ac.in. So, thank you very much. In the next class, we will discuss about electrodialysis in detail, its basic principle, ion exchange me membranes, transport through ion exchange membranes, uh, electrodialysis process, energy requirement, current utilization and efficiency, applications and what is reverse ED. So, thank you very much. Thank you.